In 1998, the discovery of an early Upper Paleolithic human burial in the Lagar Velho site, a rock shelter in the Lepido Valley, a limestone canyon 140 kilometers north of Lisbon, in the district of Leiria, central Portugal, has provided evidence of early modern humans from southern Iberia. The remains were the largely complete skeleton of an approximately four-year-old child buried with pierced shells and red ochre, and named the child the Lepido child. The discovery of the Lepido child in Portugal in December 1998 was an important event for those studying European prehistory. The Lepido child revealed a mosaic of anatomic characteristics. which have been interpreted as a result of continued admixture between the latest European Neanderthal communities and the first anatomically modern humans to arrive in Iberia. Child was a 24,500 year old early modern human child and such interpretation of the fossil had worldwide repercussion not only among the scientific community but also on the general media. The cranium, mandible dentition, and postcranial appear to present a mosaic of European early modern human and Neanderthal features, although this interpretation is disputed. This anatomical amalgam is not the result of any abnormalities, says the researchers, and that the combination can only have resulted from a mixed ancestry, something that had not been previously documented for Western Europe. They the Lagar Velho one or the Lepido child resulted from interbreeding between indigenous Iberian Neanderthals and early modern humans dispersing throughout Iberia sometime after 30 years ago. So does this mean the child was half Neanderthal and half modern human? Well no, it isn't that simple because evidence suggests that by the time the Lepido child was born Full-blooded Neanderthals had already been extinct for about 4000 years. But what it likely means is that before Neanderthals went extinct, there was a lot of interbreeding between them and early modern humans for an extended period of time, and as a result, some populations had a large percentage of their genomes consisting of Neanderthal genes. The Lepido child was also the first age burial ever discovered in the Iberian Peninsula. There is evidence that a shallow pit was dug in the back wall of a rock shelter and a branch of Scots pine was burned at the bottom and the child was then placed in the pit. Red ochre stains on both the upper and lower surfaces of the bones and a clear boundary with the surrounding whitish sediment suggest strongly that the body was wrapped in ochre painted shrub. It was laid down in an extended position with a young dead rabbit placed across its lower legs and with the pelvises of two red deer which were perhaps meat offerings by its shoulder and its feet. Round its neck was a perforated shell pendant and on its forehead was some kind of headdress made up of four canine teeth from two different red deer stags and two hinds. This burial can therefore be grouped with roughly similar gravishin ochre burials known in Britain at Pavaland, Russia and especially Moravia. Scientists say from the start it was clear that this was an anatomically modern child as it has a chin and other modern features but the bodily proportions especially those of the legs suggest some Neanderthal input. If the child was indeed a hybrid of anatomically modern humans and Homo neanderthalensis, there could be significant implications regarding the Neanderthal interaction with Cro-Magnons and the taxonomical classification of these species. Because the child lived several millennia after Neanderthals are thought to have disappeared, its anatomy probably reflects a true mixing of these populations. during the period when they coexisted and not a rare chance mating between a neanderthal and an early modern human but to those that oppose this theory of a child being a hybrid they also have their reasons for example the morphology of the child's bony labyrinth located in the inner ear points to it being a modern human 
Yet opposition team of researchers say that their data are inconclusive with regard to the hybrid theory. Researchers do consider possible alternative explanations such as nutritional or climatic factors for the child's unusual proportions, but they also conclude that no alternative hypothesis has yet been presented that fits the data better than the hybridization theory. But at the end of all this, I'd like to believe that Neanderthals and modern humans presumably were more alike than different and they are two groups who viewed each other as appropriate mates. What are your thoughts on this guys? Do let us know by dropping a comment in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching and if you liked this video, do check out our channel for more related videos and please do not forget to videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.